after having discussed mini laparotomy and the various methods of tubectomy done by that route, let us move on to laparoscopic sterilization, which is quite popular during the last few years, especially in the family planning welfare program methods and in the mass program uh, scale. So it has uh, the most commonly used technique of uh, tubular sterilization and carried out under local or sometimes general anesthesia. In the camps, it is uh, uh, conducted in under local anesthesia. Mm -hmm. So single puncture or double puncture technique can be used. In earlier days, it was single puncture, but nowadays the double puncture technique is being used uh, for lab sterilization. So, and in this, uh, it's preferred method of intramural ligation after ruling out any contraindications for pneumoperitoneum or any other medical problem which has got effect on the lungs or the cardiovascular system. So patient is placed in the modified lithotomy position for laparoscopic sterilization. Usually the pre-medication in form of pethidine or uh, phenargon is uh, along with the atropine is given about 30 minutes prior to the surgery. And surgery takes hardly much, hardly any time. And uh, local anesthesia, if it is done in local anesthesia, local anesthetics is 1% uh, lipnocasin infiltrated at the puncture site just below the umbilicus down up to the peritoneum. Uh, it, this is not required if you are doing under general anesthesia. A small, uh, uh, this thing, subumbilical incision about 1.25 centimeters in length is made in the subumbilical region, and uh, pneumoperitoneum is created with carbon dioxide after introducing very needle. Uh, before starting the procedure, one should ensure that the bladder is empty and the pelvic examination is to be done. And uterine manipulator should have been introduced through the cervical canal for manipulation, for visualization of the tube and uterus uh, once the laparoscope is inserted into the peritoneal cavity. So once the, the, the thing is introduced, then with the patient in head low position, the trocar and cannula are inserted. Then the operating laparoscope with the ring-based applicator is introduced into the peritoneal cavity. So the elimination of the pelvic organs is done for visualization by the fiber optic light. Uh, the uterus is manipulated from below by an assistant so that the fallopian tubes are moved to the center of the operating field and it's easier to do the lap ligation. So each tube is picked up near the ischemic end about 2 to 3 centimeters away from the corner and is clipped or banded that is elastic band or fishy or hurka band or this elastic ring is applied or cauterization either unipolar or bipolar is utilized of a segment of the tube is done. The, this thing once the procedure is done on both the tubes the gas is allowed to escape at the end of the procedure and the instruments are removed. A subcuticular skin stitch completes the operation and uh, uh, the cautery as such uh, is uh, uh, banned in uh, by government of India. We are not supposed to use either the unipolar or bipolar cautery for sterilization. The patient can go home the same day or the next day after lap ligation. The failure rate is approximately 0.2 to 0.6 per 100 women years. So this is the uh, method in which the fellow ring is used. That is the most common uh, this thing method being used in our country. Fellow ring is a elastic band with about 3.6 millimeter uh, this thing uh, uh, diameter on the outside or the outer uh, ring and the one millimeter inside ring uh, diameter respectively. And then there is a it is 2.2 millimeter thick. So this is this, uh, the same fallopering which is being applied. It is impregnated with barium sulfate uh, for radi radiological variation. This is the, the this thing. Uh, uh, this instrument is being inserted through the laparoscope. And you can see the one fallopering has been put over here. And the two fallopings have been put over here. It is one by one once uh, uh, one ring is applied to the uh, one tube and then the uh, this uh, this thing when ma manipulator is there over here which rotates and then the second ring can be applied to the other tube. So this the tube is being held over here 
and it will be pulled inside the laparoscope like it is being done over here and uh, this uh, fallope ring will slip over the fallopian tubes. So this is, it is near the tube, it is being slipped at this stage and it's at the end of the procedure one can see the fallope ring being applied to both the fallopian tubes. So another method is uh, application of filchy clips. These are the filchy clips which have been applied on the tube and this is the tube over the uh, filchy clips. There are various other bands are also available for this thing. So this will obstruct only little amount, about 4 millimeter of the tube. So uh, in, in case the re, uh, this thing re anastroposis is required or the, that is recanalization required, the success rate will be higher if the filchy clips is, are used as compared to the mini lab surgery. So well, this, what are the, there are certain advantages of mini laparotomy and certain advantages of laparoscopic sterilization. Let us see what are the differences between the two. So the principle of mini lap is that there is a resection of the portion of the tube and in laparoscopic sterilization when there is various methods of doing that is using bipolar cautery, elastic band that is fellow ring or filchy clip can be applied. Uh, here in the mini lap any medical personnel with some surgical skins can do mini lap. However, uh, laparoscopic sterilization should only be performed by person with special training for laparoscopy. In the selection of time, uh, mini lap can be done at any time, purpurium, interval or with the MTP. Uh, lap, lap sterilization should preferably not be done within six weeks of delivery or with enlarged uterus. There is no contraindication uh, for mini lap. It can be done in conditions contraindicated for laparoscopy also. So if uh, there are lung lesions, organic heart disease, intra-abdominal additions or extreme obesity, lap sterilization is not to be done. The complications that is life-threatening complications are minimal but uh, usually not. Uh, mm -hmm. Here also lap sterilization also they are minimal but at times they are fatal. Hospital stay is more in a mini lap which is approximately 3 to 5 days whereas it's if everything goes on well the hospital stay is only 3 to 4 hours. Failure rate is less with mini lab as compared to the laparoscopy sterilization which is 0.2 to 0.6% and reversibility with after mini lab surgery is difficult due to additions and reduced remnant tubal length whereas uh, in, it is easier and effective in case of lab sterilization and if the filchy clip is being used as I said earlier only 4 millimeter of the tube is destroyed so that uh, quite a length of tube is available uh, to the surgeon if the recanalization is to be done. So the various methods by lab sterilization this is the band uh, which is being applied that is the fallope ring here and this is, has been cauterized here it has been tied and cut and this is where it has been clipped. So these various methods can be employed by the lab uh, route. So advantages of laparoscopic sterilization, here the sub umbilical scar is quite small and unless one is very careful it is almost nearly invisible. It can be also done under local anesthesia in the outpatient department and highly reversible with success rate of 70% or more. Disadvantages, uh, equipment is expensive and maintenance is not easy. And experienced persons are required to perform the surgery. And uh, electrocautery sh should be used with caution during laparoscopic tubal ligation. And unipolar current should better be avoided. But in India, even the no electro th surgery is to be done for uh, laparoscopic ligation. Then the open laparoscopy is preferred whenever difficult entry in the abdomen is anticipated. Mortality is quite low, that is 1 to 2 per 1 lakh and nowadays it is still lower than this. So what are the hazards of tubal sterilization? In general, uh, immediate it is related to uh, the type of anesthesia being given, that is general anesthesia and to the particular method used in sterilization. 
then the remote uh, complications can be there. The complications specific to the approach, they are the abdominal, vaginal or laparoscopic, which we have already dealt with. And related to sterilization, there can be occasional obesity, psychological upset, uh, then chronic pelvic pain, congestive dyspanuria, menstrual abnormalities in form of menorrhagia, hypomenorrhea or irregular menstrual period. Then there is something called as post ligation syndrome in which there is pelvic pain, menorrhagia along with the cystic ovaries. So if this may be vascular in origin or the incidence can be minimized if the blood vessels adjacent to the mesosalpings are not unduly disturbed. So and that's why one should not be using too much of tube also should not be removed. Then uh, in few cases alteration in libido can also occur. So uh, failure following female sterilization in general, the failure rate varies from 0.1 to 3.7 percent in uh, some of the lab methods and it is higher in Medlinar method than in Pomeroy's method which is 0.1 to 0.5 percent. It is more if the vaginal route is employed than in the abdominal um, uh, route and more in laparoscopic procedure than in minilaprotomy and higher when associated with other procedures like cesarean section and is higher in the younger age group. And as far as the uh, failure rate in laparoscopic method, uh, it is concerned. Fallopian failure rate is 1.7 percent. Filchy clip is 0.1 percent. Then the, with the clip sterilization, it can vary up to 3.5 percent also. And unipolar, it is 0.75 percent. Bipolar, it is 2.1 percent. Uh, in laparoscopic surgeries, so it may be due to the failure rate, may be due to fistula formation or sometimes there is spontaneous reanastomosis. So if the procedure fails, then of course it is uh, evident by the pregnancy which occurs. So it has been seen that the one third of the pregnancies following reversal, that is failure of sterilization, female sterilization, will be in the tube. That is one third will be ectopic and the rest are intrauterine. Cases have been seen almost several years after the tubectomy have been done. So almost 10 to 12 years after the tubectomy has been done, ectopic pregnancies have been seen. So that's why one should be very vigilant uh, during the reproductive period of life. Even if the tubectomy has been done, failure can occur and ectopic rate is higher than in the general population. So, oh, the medical reasons to return after the surgery has been done. So once should, when the woman should return back uh, this thing if uh, after the surgery, in the first week uh, she has to report back if there is a high fever or pus or bleeding from the wound or there is a pain, heat, swelling of the wound and uh, steady or worsening pain, cramps, tenderness in the belly and sometimes fainting or patient is feeling dizzy. So at any time in the future, patient should report back to the uh, this thing doctor. Uh, that means when she thinks that she is pregnant or there is a pain or tenderness in belly or there is fainting attacks are there. This reversibility following sterilization. It may be requested by a couple when they lose a child or the woman remarries. The success following Recanalization has increased with the microsurgical techniques to very high figures of 80 to 85 percent and isthmal anastomosis has the best results uh, as compared to the other uh, like ampullary or am isthmal ampullary um, sterilization. So the success rate is higher uh, if provided that at the primary operation only a small bit of the tube was removed or clamped with a clip or ring. In this scenario, the, uh, the reanastomosis is the best with the uh, following filchy clip application. So a few words about Mirena versus tubectomy. Uh, lately, Mirena is emerging as an alternative to tubectomy, especially in young women who may not want, uh, may want to retain fertility and avoid the permanent methods. And this may be a better choice in the presence of following condition. That is, if there is a heavy menstrual bleeding, if there is dysmenorrhea, pelvic endometriosis, adenomyosis, and myoma. 
in these uh, circumstances, mirror insertion will be better than uh, doing tubectomy. Or one should go for the husband's vasectomy. Few words about hysteroscopic sterilization. This is a non-invasive approach for an irreversible contraception. Can be performed in outpatient settings under paracervical block. The numerous techniques have been used for transcervical sterilization. Uh, the most popular of it is microinsert system that is Assure, which was approved in 2002. Another method had come in between by the name of Adriana, but later on it was withdrawn. So hysteroscopic sterilization can either be done by a chemical agent or a club, uh, sorry, plug can also be introduced in the corneal end of the fallopian tube during hysteroscopy. Then there can be use of sclerosing agents and quinacrine has been, uh, the, the, this one of the agents which was used but it has been abundant because of the high failure rate and other complications being uterine perforation, burn injury or infection. So the most popular as I said earlier uh, of the hysteroscopic sterilization method is as shown. Here a metal and a polymer micro insert which is only 4 centimeters long, this one and about 1 to 2 millimeters wide. It consists of an inner coil of stainless steel and polyethylene terephthalate fibers and outer coil of nickel titanium. It is available as a single use delivery system which can be placed using sterile 5 millimeter scope inside the uterine cavity and uh, the operating channel is a 5 French operating channel at, which is at 12 to 30 degree uh, the hysteroscope. So uh, this thing uterus is distended with the normal saline and bilateral ostia are identified. The during insertion the outer coil is wound down to keep it in a low profile position. Upon release the outer coil expands to 1.5 to 2 millimeters from its original of 0.8 millimeter and anchors tissue device firmly in the fallopian tubes. So Assure has been designed to be placed across the uterine table junctions like this. So it's a delivery catheter is used for the exact placement of this device. Once correctly placed, the delivery catheter is withdrawn and the coil remains in the uterine table junction. Like over here, and this is the Assure is there. And then the, once it is inserted, Tissue in growth occurs from the tubal wall as a result of inflammatory and fiber optic response uh, to uh, this thing, PET fibers. HSG, that is hysterosalpingography, must be done three months after the, the this assure insertion to assure a bilateral tubal occlusion because sometimes it may not occur. Uh, so as, uh, as several coils project into the uterine cavity, it makes uh, intra uh, the thing, um, IVF less feasible if required later so that the implantation becomes a problem in these cases. So at times unintended pregnancy have been reported with unilateral successful device placement. Contraindications to assure include women with known hypersensitivity to nickel and the desire of future fertility. So the advantage of a uh, sure contraceptive device that there is no abnormal scar uh, and it can be done under local anesthesia. Uh, it is a non-reversible safe non-invasive method of tubal ligation. So this was the advantage of this thing. And uh, disadvantages is that the hysteroscopy is required, then the cost is quite high and expertise for its insertion is required. It is a permanent method and uh, this thing, uh, there should be HSG, uh, this should be HSG actually to confirm the blockage of the tube should be done. The three months waiting has to be there till then some other method of contraception will have to be used. And the bilateral insertion is difficult due to spasm in approximately 15% of cases. And the tuboplasty for reversal is not possible unlike the laparoscopic or mini lap surgery. And perforation of the tube can occur because of uh, its insertion.
Then this is the quinacrine which has been introduced into the uterine cavity and uh, then the tubal sterilization, the perm it is used as a permanent method. Now the failure rate is quite high. So here we end about the female sterilization. Now uh, the thing, few words about the male sterilization also called as vasectomy. This is one of the safest, simple and most effective method of permanent contraception. Our male sterilization is merely 2.5% of all sterilization done in the country. So regardless of the methods of the uh, this thing, scrotal entry, the first step in this is identify the was and immobilize the was. So this operation can be performed even in primary health center by trained doctors under local anesthesia. When carried out under a strict aseptic technique, it reduces the risk of mortality. And the surgery uh, consists of removal of a piece of vas at least one centimeter after clamping. The ends are ligated and then folded back on themselves. Vasectomy is almost 100% effective. It is uh, the bilateral or single midline incision can be used with the scalpel on the scrotal skin each 1 to 2 centimeters long and overlying the vas difference. In general only the area around the skin entry site is anesthetized. The incision uh, are closed with sutures after vasectomy has been completed. So this is the tube, uh, the, sorry this is the vas difference which has been clamped and then the ligated over here and the intervening portion a minimum of one centimeter has been removed. That's how it brings out of the scrotum and then the uh, loop is formed and once the tube is removed and the cut ends are ligated. So advantages, it's a simple, it can be performed with minimal training, faster and less expensive operation than tubectomy in terms of instruments hospitalization and doctor's training. So there are several advantages of vasectomy over tubectomy. So the success of the procedure is confirmed by absence of sperm in the semen sample obtained after vasectomy. But this is done, uh, this thing, uh, about three months after the, so this procedure has been done. So thus, the vasectomy user and his spouse must practice alternative methods of contraception for some time after the procedure. It has been seen that only 75% men are exospermic after three months of surgery and early and late failures have been observed. And nature of the vas occlusion techniques also impacts on the early exospermia and early failures. So vasectomy complications, there's a local pain that is skin discoloration bleeding, uh, in 1-2% scrotal hematoma can occur, and the local infection, 1%, trauma to the testicular artery can occur if one is not careful, causing gangrene, but this fortunately is quite rare. And the regional swelling can occur, formation of spermatocele can be there. Antibody formation and autoimmune disease is seen in 40% of cases. Then there is a psychological complication in form of impotence, decreased libido. Uh, so this usually occurs in men who were not properly motivated before surgery and proper counseling had not been done. In some cases there can be headache, fatigue and sexual uh, vigor. Uh, then uh, however it, uh, vasectomy does not prevent uh, HIV and STIs as uh, seen also in tubal, sorry, tubal sterilization. Spontaneous recanalization can occur. Uh, failure rate is 0.15 to 0.6 per 100 women years. And 1 to 2 percent of men regret the decision for vasectomy and that this can have a psychological implications. Advantages, uh, we'd like to repeat again. Uh, it's an outpatient procedures. Local anesthesia is adequate and my, minor surgical procedure and uh, the man can assume duty after one to two days of rest and libido is usually not affected and there is no evidence of prostatic cancer uh, once the surgery has been done. Now among the vasectomies uh, and this thing now 
It is a non-scalpel vasectomy or NSV is being performed nowadays. It is a unique method of vasectomy of gaining access to the vas deferens and is a can be called as a refined method of vasectomy. This is also a daytime outpatient uh, surgery like regular vasectomy now being advocated by Government of India to promote male sterilization whose figures are quite low. Uh, so this is uh, in this one the vas is palpated with three fingers of the left hand, index and thumb in front and the middle finger behind. This is done midway between the top of the testes and the base of the penis. This overlying skin is anesthetized with xylocaine 2% uh, and a 1 cm wheel is created by injecting it beneath the scrotal skin. The vas is held with a ring clamp, a special ring clamp which will be shown later, which is applied perpendicularly on the skin over the vas. So with this instrument, it is firmly held in its place. So these are the two specialized instruments which are used for non-scalpel vasectomy. This is the ring clamp which we had discussed just now. Uh, and this, sorry, this is the ring clamp which we discussed just now, which holds the vas firmly in its grip. And uh, this is the uh, then this is the dissecting forceps, uh, which will uh, see utilized for gaining entry in beneath the scrotal skin. So ring clamp is also known as extracutaneous wax uh, vas fixation lab. This explains the ring function of the fixing the vas over the skin to make it subcutaneous. So the insides of the blade, however, are more smooth, so make, make it atraumatic. So once the vas is held firmly in its place, then the further dissection becomes easier uh, so using dissection forceps. Special dissection forceps is a modified artery forceps with a tip um, uh, tapered uh, and set to 35 degrees. So this is the dissecting forceps over here. It is very sharp at the end. And its puncture dissects the vas and acts as a also acts as a hemostat. So with the dissecting forceps, which we discussed just now, a tiny hole is made uh, with a sharp pointed end of the medial blade uh, of this forceps at the level of the junction of the middle and upper third of median raphe. So once that small hole is made, the hole, this hole is enlarged by spreading the tissues inserting both the tips of the dissecting forceps. So the vasa differentia are then pulled out with the dissecting forceps and in hold with the ringed clamp. So once it is comes out, then the at least one centimeter length of the vas is made free and mobilized and it is ligated at two places, one centimeter apart by two zero chromic catgut and the segment of the vas in between the ligatures is resected out. Division of the vasa should be accompanied by preferably by facial interposition or diathermy. This reduces the failure rate in these cases. So in this case, no skin stitches are applied. Uh, and then the, then the hemostasis is secured. And then the wound dressing is done. And a small pressure bandage is applied. The same procedure is repeated. Uh, the thing, sorry. Uh, after this, a scrotal suspens uh, suspensory uh, bandage is to be worn so that there is a scrotal support. So this is the uh, non-scalpel vasectomy. Here the anesthesia has been given and the vas has been held with a ring for uh, forceps, specialized ring forceps. So after holding this with the ring forceps and with the special dissecting forceps, a tiny hole is created like this. And this shows the figure of the, that is the vas being held firmly with the ring clamp so that the further dissection becomes easier. So after this, once the, it is enlarged, that uh, hole is enlarged, then the ends, the vas is brought out and the ends are ligatured. And uh, after excising a small segment, about one centimeter segment of the vas. The tight ends are uh, pushed back into the scrotum and uh, opposite for vas is also manipulated like this only. And once the, both the vas, the vasectomy has been done, then the uh, this thing, uh, pressure bandage is applied. No need of stitching. Because only very small, it uh, this, uh, this thing hole covers on its own. 
one woman doesn't have to do anything. So complications are less with non-scalpel vasectomy. An infection at the operation site can occur. Hematoma formation can occur uh, rarely. Postoperatively, patient is instructed to avoid strains exercise and the sexual intercourse. Uh, scrotal support is applied for a few days. Other contraceptive methods are to be used for 12 to 16 weeks till there is azospermia. And semen analysis is usually done after three months. So advantages of non-scalpel vasectomy, there are fewer complications, less pain during procedure, it's a smaller wound, and it is believed to decrease men's fear about vasectomy, and procedure time is shorter as compared to the, uh, the routine or traditional method of vasectomy, and doesn't require a scrotal incision and uh, eliminates the scalpel. However, both the this thing, uh, procedures can be done quickly. It doesn't take much time even for the traditional vasectomy to be done. So since there are advantages of vasectomy over tubectomy, uh, let's uh, recapitulate again the advantages of vasectomy. Uh, it can be done in the clinic under local anesthesia. No entry to the peritoneal cavity is required. Less time needed as compared to the tubal sterilization. Complications are less. There is no hospital admission or stay is required. It is highly effective with minimum side effects and there is it's a low cost and with little training, simple to perform. So even uh, though the vasectomy is quite easy and so many advantages of vasectomy, still it has not become popular as compared to the tubectomy since the men's attitude are like that. That's why it has not taken that much hold as the female sterilization in our country. So a few, few words about other methods, uh, we can run uh, male sterilization. One can use sclerosing agents such as 90% ethanol, 3.6% formaldehyde, silver nitrate, hydrogen peroxide, acetic acid. This can eliminate the need of surgery, are effective and easily administered. However, the consequences of intravascular injection and the excessive destruction of the vas by even a slight increase of installation of these products can be disastrous uh, and the procedure then is irreversible. So that's why this has not become popular and on the males it is the vasectomy which is the surgery being done. Thank you.